without moving this foot. His knee snapped. Ever since then, he's got a dislocated knee. If he tries to run, if he does anything like spontaneous or fast, he tends to dislocate his knee. That thing pops out, pops back in. So this is not an injury anybody should want to have, especially not if you're a kicker or your goal is to kick. Hi guys, how to do my non-telegraphic roundhouse kick. The ones you guys see in my short video, okay? Without telegraphing, without moving the front foot. Now this is a very important video because some of you guys said you're gonna start trying this kick and I don't want anybody to get hurt, okay? So first of all, I wanna get into a story about my sibling, my brother. He actually trained Taekwondo also with me, but he only got up to green belt, only trained for about a year, then he quit. Um, he couldn't handle certain things like the hard sparring and things like that, but that's, that, 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 that's besides the point. The point is, he didn't train for about, I think, three, four, maybe five years. I think about five years. He didn't train at all. And one day, he's kicking it in his living room with a bunch of friends, and he basically decides to throw a roundhouse kick. But the thing is, because he had not kicked so long, basically what he did was, he did the entire movement of the roundhouse kick, except for the pivoting of the foot. So basically his knee, his upper body, his hip, everything turned that way, but he, only his foot stayed there. So basically his knee snapped. And ever since then, he's got a dislocated knee. If he tries to run, if he does anything like spontaneous or fast, he tends to dislocate his knee. That thing pops out, pops back in. So this is not an injury anybody should want to have, especially not if you're a kicker or your goal is to kick. Like that's always been one of my biggest fears is to have my knees destroyed or uh, torn or broken or dislocated. Uh, luckily up until now, my knees are intact. My knees are super healthy. So I don't have any issues with this. So that, 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 that's the first thing I want you guys to keep in mind, okay? Your leg, your foot, your knee, even your hips and your shoulders, they don't really move like a normal roundhouse kick. They kind of stay in place. And for that, you really have to keep this part of your leg in check. Like especially your quadriceps and your knee. Basically when you're kicking, I'm gonna hold myself just, just for the purpose of showing you guys. When you kick, these should stay right where they are even if your foot is turning all the way this way. Even your shoulders cannot turn too much because if you do, you will put that pressure on that knee. So basically your leg has to be in check. You have to keep that in mind the entire time that this leg cannot twist. Like this leg has to be able to move this way without this one moving at all. Same thing for the other side, okay? Now to do this kick, I'm gonna show you guys some drills that I've thought about so you guys can actually do this kick. Now keep in mind, I've never done these drills myself because I never had to train for this kick. I, um, I pretty much naturally already had the, uh, the hip flexibility and the leg flexibility. That's another thing about this kick. This kick, more important than your leg flexibility as far as splits, is your hip flexibility. It's something that many martial artists don't talk about. A lot of martial artists may have some flexibility, but most are very tense in the hips. They really have zero flexibility in the hips. Like you see that with a lot of people, like Michael J. White, Ramsey Dewey, just to name a few, you will notice that their hips are very tight. Like when they kick, basically they kind of look like this. Even if the leg is going high, there's not much movement here. This kind of stays stiff in place. So it's very important to have hip flexibility with this. You guys see how my hips moving that way? That's one of the most important things with this kick, is hip flexibility. Now, how are we gonna test the hip flexibility? Follow me guys, let's do this. I'm gonna start with the most difficult stretches uh, uh, for, for this kick. And at the very end of the video, I'm gonna show some basic stretches that I don't even do. Together we have the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course. Bob. So today we're gonna talk about how to kick higher. These are gonna be advanced hip stretches. Right. And uh, somebody stated, I wish I knew this years ago. He's a second degree black belt. Who could that possibly be? <laughs> That's right, people would say, well, they're out of the arena, but actually not. I spent 17 years practicing martial arts, and I really wished I knew these hip stretches because my side kicks and round kicks definitely would have been higher. But in case you can't do any of this, then my advice is to try the stretches at the very end of the video, okay? Now, let's get to it. First of all, you guys want to practice this on something where you have stability. So in case that you fall, 
you hook and hold yourself, right? So, like I said before, you need to put all your weight on this leg a little bit. Keep it in check from not spinning that way. Keep it in mind, I'm doing it with left so you guys at home can see it on your right side. Now, here's the tricky part. Your leg basically has to be able to, to come over here like this. I'm gonna put it all the way over here. This is right before the kick. Come all the way over here like this with the knee here sideways like a roundhouse kick would come. You guys see my foot? It's like a roundhouse kick. Now I'm gonna put my shoulders back here in the position I was earlier. So I can actually be all the way back here, if you guys see, with my foot in the roundhouse kick position without me needing to pivot this foot, move the hips or move the shoulders. Okay, a real roundhouse kick would be here. The normal one, all the way over here. Like this, like a, like a, like a Muay Thai kick would be here with the shin. Taekwondo kick, of course, will be more over here like this, more distance. That said, the way that I do this kick, the non-telegraphic one, basically you need to go, you need to be able to know for sure that you can put your leg here and this leg straight, basically looking like this. Okay, now, this might be too high for some of you because this is more for like the high kick. I wanna go for a high kick here. Ah! One more time. Ah! Okay, so, basically, if you, this is too difficult, you go to the most important one, in my opinion, is this one. You wanna put your leg on a surface where your leg is completely um, horizontal. Okay, hold myself here, and I'm gonna kick. Right there, so. You guys can also, with this practice, your balance. You will feel it in the butt, you will feel it in the hips. Okay, so, come here. Basically what you guys need, you can, you can do this anywhere. You guys need something stable, where you can place one foot here, and one leg here. If you guys are able to do this here, keeping the shoulders in, in, in this position, fighting stance, knee here, leg all the way, horizontal and the front leg forward right here ah! Ah! okay basically that's it and if you want to go higher of course you need to test it like i did a minute ago see if your knee can go higher and for the low kick it's not even necessary for me to explain it to you guys it's pretty much common sense if you can do it here you can also go lower all you should do is just point, point your knee down lower or find a lower surface like this one here you know for your low kicks right so um that's basically it uh, for the second video on this topic i'm gonna get into um how this kick helps you not get hit how it's not only a good uh, offense kick but it's also a very good defensive kick basically it's almost an equivalent to mayweather if you guys see mayweather fight flexible you get your muscles and if your hip capsule is tight it's going to limit your kicks yes it is so we've got to get to that as well as the stretching of the muscles so uh let's get right to it bob that's what we're going to go after yeah this isn't wasted by the way i mean you oh, have no. to stretch the muscles too right but we're going to do both now yeah so and this is just i did these and say i really said i wish i knew this yeah. 25 years ago in my yeah, it's good it's cool stuff it really is all right so the first one do you want to talk about a little bit about Kelly Stark, Dr. Stark? Well, I guess he, he he's Dr. Stark. He, he's big into CrossFit, by the way. Yeah. But he's he, the, the book, uh, by the way, that Becoming a Subtle Leopard, he sold like 500 to 600,000 copies. It, it is so it's directed, a best speller, directed, best seller, toward, directed towards high level athletes. I think even a regular person can be used in practice. Sure. I, yeah. I, I could squat beyond 45 degrees. And I can almost get down to a level now. Sure. So what are you doing? Taking a nap, Brad? No, no. This is 
one of the ways you get at that hip capsule, get your butt up against the wall, lie on the floor. It's kind of nice, you can almost uh, relax. You can relax when you do this, and you should relax. Think about your breathing, as we all know in the martial arts, we're gonna breathe, relax. Now, watch my feet. We need to get them out this way. Point your toes up towards the ceiling. Don't, don't let it go out like this so much. And I can feel the stretch already. I bet you feel it in your hips. You got, I bet you feel it in your hip adductors too. Don't yeah, spread. right in here. Now I'm gonna take here. I actually just go like this. I use my elbows because it's a little easier. And right there, I can feel a really aggressive stretch in those hips. And the, the thing is here is it's gonna relax and, and uh, hang out as Kelly says. Yeah. Just you know what I used to, what I do bread on this one is I actually do it on a bed. I, 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 I slide up to the bed yeah. and I put my feet on top of the bed yeah. at first and then I put it on the edge. I see. Yeah. So it gets me really close. Oh. Oh. So, now yeah. I just drop my feet down as I, whoa, is that starting to get intense? And again, you don't want to rip the muscles off the bone. Uh, you know, yeah, sometimes I, people I, in, the, in karate, they think no pain, no gain. Well, you don't want to tear your muscles. You don't want to get set back. You want to go after this. It's going to take, you know, me some time. You can, you may be hanging out here for uh, one to three minutes, depending on, and you might give it a little break. Or much longer if you want. Exactly. Well, for starting out, I, yeah, would, I would not start out at five minutes. A uh, uh, really good stretch because you're getting a lot of muscles all at once. And it's a functional pattern. Right, it is, yeah. right. It's definitely going to help those side kicks and those rounds that hike your those. squats, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, I got to tell you, though, I got to continue to uh, emphasize don't get too aggressive on these. Because yeah. I think I'm pretty safe in saying people in martial arts have that extreme tendency to sure. push it hard, hard, hard. Uh, and we don't want to get into that. As I got older, I, I realized that. Right. And with all these today, um, if you have like loose joints or you have rotator arthritis or you have osteoporosis, you shouldn't be doing these. Right. So, right. It's, most people are pretty aware of that, that, that happens. Right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Number two. For martial arts, I should say, right? Yeah. For, for yeah. this purpose, everyone knows what we're talking about. Right. Uh, if you have, <laughs> I was talking to Bob, most people in, in martial arts aren't going to do this without a pad. But if you're, you know, a little older and you got knees like mine. Or if you're a lot older. Yeah. And you have knees like his. Put a little pad under that knee. It just make, makes it a little more comfortable. Then you can stretch better. So we're going to do a deep lunge. Really stretch it out as far as you feel comfortable. You're going to hang out there and, what does Kelly say, doodle around a little bit? Noodle around. Noodle around. Yeah. Uh, and you'll feel that hip. It really works the hip. We're not doing the hamstring here. We're getting that hip capsule. Now, we're gonna go from this point. Now, chest or belly to the knee or the thigh, and we're gonna roll in that way. See, he's rotating that hip out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's an extra Boy, rotation. That really gets after that. I, I swear to God, I've never felt stretches like this, and I stretched a lot in my younger years. Yeah, it's, he's got some innovative ways. The other thing he does, he'll grab the ankle, Brad. Oh, yeah, that's and, right. And use the arm to leverage. Yeah, so grab here, elbow here, yep. and push out. Like that. Yep. And then you, that one where you push here, and then you push your chest away from the chest. Sure, shoulder. yes. Wow. So, I am just, I swear, I, I bet you I could increase the height of my kick by about a foot. You know, I'm pretty much retired from karate now, but uh, I started when I was 22, and I until I was about 40 some years old and my daughter was born and life came about. I didn't have the time. Oh, well, if you need to ride, ride a fat horse, you can <laughs> Yeah. Make sure, obviously, you do both legs. For this right. video, I'm only going to do one. But it just, it is amazing. And you, Bob was telling yeah, me about this. And, it, and yeah. I was like, oh, Bob, you must be exaggerated a little bit. You weren't. No, it wasn't at all. Now, this next one is even more advanced. It's one of my favorite ones, but um, you need some equipment for yeah. it. And um, again, caution. This is not for people who have yeah. a hip that could dislocate or... Um, yeah, if you're hypermobile, hypermobile you've had any kind of dislocation. Obvious, a hip replacement. No way. This is for healthy people yeah. trying to kick high that are very uh, supple. And, so what uh, he has here is he has a, a wall anchor, which is nice because you can hook up these bands to the, the wall anchors. Yeah. You don't have to have a wall anchor if you had a really stout table or you put a 
an eye bolt or something in the yeah. wall so you have a solid anchor. And then a loop band, but it needs to be the heavy duty right. loop band. Uh, what is it? Uh, this one is a 125 pound one. Sure. Um, so you want a little stretch, but not much. Yeah, our set comes with five of those bands, and uh, that's the heaviest one. Yeah. So I'm going to put my leg through the loop band, and I'm going to bring it up in my crotch as high as we can go, and because we want to get to that hip socket. Yeah, it's going to work on that that um, band around the hip socket, yeah. the capsule, they call it. So get it up in there. Don't be shy. Just get it up where it belongs. This side, Brad. Grab now, over here. even the toughest martial artist, if you got a hard floor, you're going to want to put a cushion down. Um, because you're going to get a better stretch. So I'm yes, going to you are. angle this way. So he's got the, 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 the knee almost uh, is kind of underneath the belly button. Is yep. where, you're, where you want it, Brad. Yep. And, and then you, you, he leans to the side here. And he's actually like he's trying to push the hip ball out of the socket. That's what he's trying to do. Yep. And that, by doing that, he's stretching the capsule. And, and again, he's going to noodle around. Then he goes into flexion. And then he, he can also move the hip into internal and external rotation. Right now he's moving the external rotation by using the other leg. Internal. Oh, internal rotation. That's right. <laughs> that's, I, yeah. Everyone gets that mixed up. Yeah, and that's the one I need help with. And I actually work that one a lot. I'm a, I'm, I externally rotate really well. If I go the other direction, that's my limitation. That's just the way my body's made. Uh, but I'm pulling on this now. Sure. I'm going to go out a little bit farther because it loosened up a little bit. So I'm going to move things out just a little bit more, a little more pressure. Does not hurt. It feels like no, a good stretch. No, you shouldn't have any stretch. pain at all. Yeah. Un no pain whatsoever. Yeah. That's not the idea. The idea is to stretch it and I, I have noticed like, you know, the way to do this is to check things, you know, and then test and then stretch retest right that's sure. what you want to do because you prove it to yourself whether or not it works or not sure so measure your kick i don't know how you do that brad well i think the way i would do it because kicking is pretty dynamic um it's hard to measure unless you're actually doing a kick if you've got you know something you're kicking someone's holding sure you measured it but i wouldn't just stretch and then kick you know obviously you got to get some warm-ups right and some dynamic right. motion going but i would but, you know, you know where you kick now. I would stretch like this for maybe a week. Get used to how to stretch, how to how to do it, and you know, work that in with your other stretches that we talk about. Good warm ups, and then see your kicks go higher. Yeah, you you'll know. be able to tell. I mean, you'll you'll know. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's great. <laughs> oh, <no more. laughs> All right, good luck with those kicks. I'm sure they're going to help.